Okay, so here's the spoiler. If you didn't get get this algorithm here, and if you did get it, that's great, but uh, you might want to watch this anyway just to compare it to mine. So, so you can see uh, if we had different logic steps. I already showed you my logic step here. So first thing I want to do here, I want to make these braces here. Basically, I want to output the item here of the first random number here. Mod X here. So remember, <coughs> now I want to um, output a tab. Just because I want to output a tab instead of an end line here so you can see something different. Okay. So now, this is going to be a number from 0 to 4. Okay. Well, the problem is with this here, if we output a random number from 0 to 4 here, we need to uh, store that random number to a value here, right? Well, we can't store it. We won't remember that one is. It'll, if we uh, set this equal to a value here, it'll be a different random number here. So what we can do here, uh, let's say we make another variable called r. Okay. That The r is going to be our random number here. So beforehand, let's say we say r is equal to a random number of x here. Now let me change this just to r here. Now look at this here. I already ma I, I put a random number into a variable and I s then I output it to the screen. Now all I have is just um I have that variable memorized. The comp the compiler has this thing stored in memory, so we we can refer back to it. So let's say this random number was two. Right here. Um, let me go back. Let's say this random number was 2 here. So what we do, we take this 3 here, and then we just put it to the screen somewhere. So like this, pretend this black thing still the, the screen here that we see. Well then, after that, I want to say the uh, whatever was in 2 here, I want that to be equal to whatever was in 3. Okay. So this remember this is the algorithm here. So then I do the same thing. I see what's in three. Whatever uh, whatever was in four, I want it to go in three now. I'm pushing everything back here. How do I write a code for that? Well, after this here, I must go through a, a certain loop here. While and let's just say like while the, before I put something in here, I want to continue. I want to break out of this loop when I get to the very last piece of the array here. Okay, which happens to be for this case. Okay, so let's say we get to here. So random number was two here, right? So I want the item of of the r value here. Let's remember. Let's just pretend that the r is two, and I want that. I want this to be equal to the item of r plus one. Does that make sense? <coughs> So remember, this is going to be whatever was in 2 here. I want the value of item 2 to be equal to what, whatever is in 3 right now. Then after that, I go to R. I'm going to increment R. Then it's going to go through again. Whatever was in 3 here, whatever was in 4, is going to go to 3. Because this R plus 1, item of 4 is now going to be stuffed into item 3 here. Now, I want, I want this here. I want to stop when r is greater than, because I want to stop here, right? Because look, my r right here is now equal to 3. And this put in whatever was in 4 into 3 here, right? Does this make sense? So if I went on to 4 here, it's going to take the, uh, it's going to try to take a, a 5 here, right? And stuff in the 4, well 5 doesn't exist, so I definitely want to stop at 4. In this case, this happens to be x minus 1 here. Because because whatever x is equal to 5 right now, it's, r has got to be bigger. While r is, um, actually, l I'm sorry, less, less than, while r is less than x minus 1. Okay? So while r, so while 2 is less than 4, we're going to keep on going until 2 gets up to 4 here. And then now this just basically just shifts everything over this while loop here shifts everything over here. Now, I'm going to I should have introduced this to you a long time ago. And I'm probably going to have to go back and um make an extension around lesson 1. Yeah, this is a comment here. If you press two forward slashes here, every anything that's written in green is not going to be read by the compiler. So you can type in whatever you want, say 
this shifts the boxes back. That way you can kind of have an idea to, to remember what this loop does. And you can also say this, you can just make comments everywhere. Use, or you can say like generate random numbers. So this is just basically your notes here. So I'll go back and make another video that shows you how to do comments from way back in the beginning because I forgot about that. Yeah, <coughs> when you uh, code stuff, they they like you to use a lot of comments. Now I hardly comment anything, which is bad. But um, they in the industry you're gonna want to use comments because they want you to because you might be looking at someone else's code and you might not have any idea what they're doing, and the comments might give you an idea to figure out what they were doing. So, so if someone were to look at this here, they might not figure out what I'm doing here unless I, if I put comments here, they might have an idea what I'm talking about, but they still might be confused. They, they might, they might be saying, what box is here? I mean, we're referring to the boxes as our array. It's basically a variable that this only holds in integer values in here. In these boxes. Okay. So we run through this. Then after we get out of this here, we're at the end of the for loop here, right? And uh, let's make this a little smaller here. And uh, when we get to the end of the for loop, we uh, we decrease x again. And this is the running code. This is what will make you. This is the code that you can use to generate random numbers here. That don't repeat here. So let's try this here. See if it works. Five, four, one, two, three. That looks good. 31524 that looks good here so if it's still a little confusing I'm going to leave it up here for a little bit and this is the uh, here's the beginning of the code here and uh, here's the uh, so try and try and work it out here try to trace it or you can try to write it on paper to see <coughs> to see how it's working so it can be a little confusing here so when you write these programs here you're going to have to come up with all kinds of uh, algorithms or you know, instructions for the computer to make this, to make the computer do things that you want it to do. So it can be a little tricky at times. But this was a, this was a little different here. It might have got you. So if you wrote a very long code that did the same exact thing, that's good. And this might, this will probably be the shorter version. So if you figure, if you did figure out a way to get it to work, <coughs> you probably, you might, I'm, you probably learn more doing that yourself than you did watching the remaining the last tutorials since you actually did it yourself but here's here's my version here and you can kinda compare them and if you didn't get it that's alright <clears throat> just make sure you understand this here or have a, at least be able to follow it along you don't have to remember it or memorize it but now just to show you one last thing let's say I wanna make this um, 52 here and I want to make this 52 here. And this is just going to be the uh, wrapping in it, just wrapping it up here. Um, and um, mm, is something missing here? Oh yeah, right here. See this initialization here? Let me go back. Now, um, let's say, uh, let's say I don't want to initialize this this way here. Let's say I don't initialize it at all. Okay, I can make another for loop here. Let's call it a different variable, not x here. You can actually use x here, but I'm going to get in that into the next video when I start introducing scope here. So I'm going to make it. We can make it x here, and it'll be read as two different x's here. But I want to get into. Uh, I want to get into that in the next tutorial. So let's just call it a different variable. Let's just call it a here. For int a equals zero, and a is less than five here, a plus plus. So this will be the last thing here. So then we can say uh, item of a is equal to a. Basically, just it sets it to one, two, three, four, five, or a plus one here. Because 0 plus 1 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. Then that's the initial. Basically, it just initializes it through a for loop instead of uh, doing it this way here.
one, three, two, four, five, and it just does the same. It's just a different way to initialize it. Now, this is what I wanted to get across here. Let's say I make this 52 here. Let's say I make this 52 here. And I make this 52 here. Now, it's nice to have a variable, because if I, if I did that, I would just be able to change a variable. So I probably should have done that here, but now i got to... <coughs> and now I basically have a deck of cards here. We can... <coughs> this basically just shuffles a deck of cards. And we can use... We can actually make eight decks, two decks, you know, whatever decks we want. To try to make games. We can write games, or we can just make items here. So in a game, if, maybe if you... Uh, want to draw weapons out of a box here. You don't want to have repeat weapons come out of the box if they're not there. Or we can just play cards. We don't want to repeat any cards that have already been pulled out of the deck. And we can put cards back in as well. So this is just an introduction of non-repeating random numbers here that you can use. So you can see that each card, no number will be repeated here since we just wrote the algorithm for 5. It was easier to see 5 here. Then we can just change it to 52 or 1000 or whatever we'd like and they'll, those numbers won't repeat. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and um, <clears throat> this hopefully this video did open a lot of doors for you. So, we're going to wrap this up, and then we'll finally be talking about the rules of scope here, and we'll discuss about this, this stuff in here, the variables that were declared inside here.